Hello everybody and I'm here to describe to you what I currently have in bloom and it makes my whole kitchen smell like coconut lemon pie and it kind of really does and it kind of makes me hungry because uh, in you know by thinking of it I would think that coconut and lemon would not go really together but I think now I'm smelling it I'm actually kind of craving to eat something that has lemon and coconut in it and it really really does smell like lemon and coconut here and I tell you guys that it's very very delicious and it's tricking my mind that there's food here but there's not really and i just really wanted to share this experience to you guys because it's so really weird and i've never felt this much in terms of my sensory perception that i would crave so much of like a dessert because of the fragrance that's coming off from orchids I cannot really really describe it I'm it's making me salivate a little bit you know drool I don't know it's gross but anyway that's what how I feel right now and of course the lemon comes from the Sideria Japonica not that now I'm only noticing that Aside from the intricate patterns on the lower sepals, as you can see the lines, the dark maroon lines underneath, as you can see there, there are also like random spots on it. You could see that. See? There's some like random, random spots on all of the flowers some of them don't have it like this one here but some of them do like these guys at the front then some of them again don't have it like this one but this one has it as you could see there it's really odd well anyway I, that's just I'm, I was just curious of like how if it, you had this feature on your flowers of Sideria Japonica because now I'm just like seeing this for like kind of the first time and it makes me like kind of wonder like is it really happening pretty much across the Sideria Japonica site I mean I would think these are like self hybrids and it's not like a real hybrid, it's more of a selfing. You know, that's one of the ways that people propagate this uh, Sideria japonica, especially the Phalaenopsis species. They do like to self these guys through seed. And each one is basically some sort of a different version of the other sibling. So there you go. So that smells really like lemon. And it's been like doing that ever since I bought it. Yep. So I'm excited for that one. And um, this guy here really smells like a lot of coconut, roasted coconut, you know, aroma. And it kind of makes me feel high. And with me having a background in chemistry, um, it kind of makes sense that people get a little bit high like you know a chemical high due to this aroma because a lot of this aroma as you would know even if you look it up on Google or anything like that you really don't really have to know much about chemistry but aroma aromatics from flowers uh, the composition the chemicals that produce this aroma are from this aromatic you know benzene ring derivative chemicals and a lot of this when it when it's in high concentration especially in the air it kind of uh, goes through your nose and it kind of does this 
um, altering effects, you know, chemical alt altering effects that would, you know, as you would think, um, paints, thinners, you know, the new car smell, those have aromatics in it. And it kind of makes you dizzy if it's too much. And if it's not too much, you could, you could just have a little bit of a buzz. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, be careful, of course, with, you know, those exposures to very high concentrations of aromatics. But I think, uh, of course, orchids, um, aromatics from flowers, I would think it's not so much of a, like a high concentration that it would actually, um, you know, um, get you sick, I would think. But it's just like a much more of a good feeling of like the smells and, you know, reminds you of stuff. You know, um, did you ever have that experience of having memories brought about by smells, scents, fragrances, you know, especially from your childhood? And this kind of brings me a lot of like those memories from childhood because I came from the Philippines and we have a lot of coconut trees and there are a lot of coconut products desserts you know name it you know we put it on food you know coconut milk um, for curries and whatever and of course it kind of makes me happy without even like really thinking about it it's much more of a feeling and uh, I guess that's one added bonus of taking care of orchids with fragrances because just naturally makes you happy and that's one of the best ways of you know having a hobby because of course why would you be doing something if it doesn't bring you anything to the table right <laughs> There you go. I'm just having a morning rant. It's not more, much more of a morning rant. It's much more of like just these scents from these guys are so overwhelming. So basically, I would just like to remind you guys how I take care of this Maxillaria tenifolia or the coconut orchid. And you would remember this the lazy method wherein it doesn't even have soil or anything. Like there's a little bit of moss but just a little bit really really a little bit and pretty much on the top but mostly on the bottom it's styrofoam and the roots just take over you know and the, so this is basically it's not even semi water culture it's pretty much always in water i mean i fill it up to here and it's just pretty much it and it's always in in water culture that way and the the bulbs just keep getting plump and I've seen one, curiously, here somewhere, that it actually popped open because it was so plump. Where was it? Oh, there you go. See here? The other day, it was so plump. Oh, it's a good focus. What's wrong? What's wrong with my, com with my camera? anyway so there you go that has a like a crack on it and the other day i was looking at it and it was so plump and then the next day it was already cracked <laughs> i guess you could actually overwater them to a point that they would suck up water too much and they, they cannot even handle it i don't know but the other guys are doing pretty well i don't really mind just as long as it blooms and pretty much all of the new growths or the new uh, bulbs from from the new growths last year gave a flower. There you go. So the second level, because the first level is basically the the old bulbs, which these new growths grow out grew, grew out of, and then the new growths gave these flowers. Too bad they only do this like pretty much just during the spring. And sometimes they could uh, do this up until like early to midsummer, but that's pretty much it for this guy. And then and then no blooms, right? But I I heard that these flowers last for a couple of weeks, 
close to two months so that's not bad and the scent is really strong I won't really forget it for a while the flowers are dark uh, maroon or something so like red and brown all together and the the lip is very exotic looking because of the spotting the patterns on the lip are very intricate and very groovy I mean it's very weird in a way looks like a small you know spotted tongue or something and there you go so that's pretty much it excuse me and um, yeah I really do recommend it for like a lot of people who have having trouble growing orchids and it's so easy you know just water it a lot it likes water and um, I put it somewhere really bright don't forget to put it somewhere really bright because I've heard people cannot rebloom this because there's not much light and you would know if you're having enough light if you have yellow leaves because I tend to yellow the leaves on this one because the area that I had it was so bright and the leaves are not as long anymore when I bought it because when I bought it it was very green and the leaves were like twice as long as this so right now it's just like a foot long when I bought it it's like almost two feet in the leaves each leaf was like that long and that's like a, a sign that it's not getting a lot of light the leaves would be very long so that's basically how I grow that one and this one I'm still like uh, I think it would be just growing alongside with my other Phalaenopsis species it's not really that fuzzy I would think I hope and of course I just want to show you this begonia that I rooted in water it just rooted crazily when I put it in water it's so easy huh. imagine that <laughs> well uh, I was just happy that it bloomed while in a in a container or in a mug like this so weird and anyway so this tulumia I just like to show you this while it's in bloom because I'm thinking of um, uh, pollinating this guy here and what can I say about this guy well it's easy to take care of just make sure that the the roots get dry by the end of the day because I don't think they like being soggy at all just like the um, the, um, the, the maxillaria there that likes a lot of water this one likes to dry out it likes to be watered in the morning and then dry out that's it that's basically it and it would grow new fans and that's it and then it would bloom when the, the fans become a little bit a little bit uh, what do you call that? Uh, mature, just like that. This is the oldest one. It actually uh, uh, faded now, and I'm gonna take pollen from this guys and pollinate this newly opened ones here. Yeah, so you could see that it had hadn't really opened nicely yet because the the what do you call that? Some of the petals are not really oriented fully yet but they're all they all look different you know some have like lighter pink use on them and then some are redder especially the newer ones the newly opened ones and then it would grow out to have this pinker uh, you know edges so basically that's it and this is how it looks when it fades it's like boop, it just goes down well, anyway I just like to show you this this guys here and uh, because this would be the last time you would be seeing them this Tulumia this no ID no this no ID this is uh, I forgot the name should I, I wrote it somewhere well it's I will just put it on the description it's a uh, gyrac firm Red Bull something like that all right and then um, yeah hopefully I would have babies from this one and uh, yeah there you go 
All right, happy growing my subscriber friends. And of course, for those who haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button, uh, like the video, and yeah, see you on the next video. All right, bye-bye.